okay okay this this should be this should be working fine all right so whenever you're ready uh dr simbolon uh, dr karti kasari you can uh, you can begin thank you so much okay thank you paolo and a very good morning in the uk and surrounding areas and good afternoon from indonesian colleague here um Thank you for attending this session. And uh, my name is Nurmala Elmin Simbolon, and uh, my colleague here, uh, Dwi Karti Kasari. We are both uh, are in, uh, teaching staff uh, in vocational higher education in Indonesia. At this session, we are going to share uh, about EMI and ESP teacher collaborations. Indeed, that in the title of the flyer of the pro uh, the this program it says EAP uh, but the the approach could be similar but we are going to highlight that in Indonesian vocational higher education mostly ad uh, adopt most teachers adopt English for specific purposes yep so our talk uh, would be around that we are going to share uh, how uh, EMI and internationalization of higher education and the issues of EMI implementation and the core focus of this session is we are going to share a case study from Indonesia especially teacher collaboration especially between uh, EMI and ESP teachers and we are going to uh, share or sum up with conclusion a recommendation and for the background uh, I believe that uh, in many contexts, especially in English, uh, in, in the context where English is not the, uh, the main language of the people like Indonesia, um, EMI and higher education internationalization go hand in hand. And the, the study shows that uh, the drivers mostly to facilitate student uh, and student and staff exchange program and to prepare domestic students for global market and there is a perception based on the studies once again to inf uh, there is a perception that EMI by adopting EMI in the uh, agenda of higher education internationalization so the English of the lecturers and the students can be improved and in overall, in the total that uh, the program is intended to increase in the institution profile, especially in the national and international scope. And some studies uh, have been done quite uh, sufficiently in, in on EMI. And some issues are collected, some issues from the studies. So from the students' uh, perspective, um, especially for the our current study, uh, there is inadequate English and unfamiliarity with module related uh, vocabulary. This is still in the in the writing process uh, of the report of the study that we uh, we surveyed the students who have gone for a short program in overseas universities uh, in. Uh, what it, where EMI is provided uh, and the context of the uh, EMI is the countries like Taiwan and uh, Germany where the where English is not their main uh, English or is not spoken in the society and the students also found difficulties in following the lecturers uh, English uh, this is the study by Mutnikin and Chuang, which uh, focus on the students of Indonesian uh, in Indonesia. Universities and for the in following so this is a kind uh, it is a part of uh, in socializing their life in a uh, overseas or in abroad the students found challenges it is also a uh, voice by the students in our the first point in the in the most current study uh in the first point inadequate english and unfamiliarity 
Uh, it is not published yet. It is in the process of review. And the last one, uh, we need to highlight that there is a need uh, for language support for the students. And from the teacher's perspectives, um, the study shows that, yeah, of course, uh, we took from some studies, especially from Galloway and uh, Ruek. So lecturers found uh, that they have limited, especially in spoken English, when they deliver EMI, and they found also designing learning material and lessons uh, in EMI programs. And this is also evidence in our uh, our collaborative project with uh, Galloway, uh, which was funded by the British Council in 2023. And in pedagogy, there are uh, the studies shows in effective code switching by uh, the teachers when using uh, the first language and English language. And they found uh, also of challenges in assessing students, learning and engaging students. And there is a need uh, for EMI content and language teachers collaboration, which is at the same time, the there is a challenge in implementing the teacher collaboration itself. And the studies actually recommend several things, yeah, several strategies. And one of the recommendations which becomes the focus of our sharing today is the collaboration of EMI content and ESP language teachers. And with the ISEC and CSEC and the problem or project-based curriculum in Indonesian vocational higher education, we are going to formulate or to encapsulate how the collaboration can be possible. So here is the context. So Indonesian vocational higher education, we need to share a bit about this um, because uh, we are aware that there is difference, there is a difference or uh, some differences between the educational system uh, in, in Indonesia and in other countries. So in Indonesian higher education, there are two types, mainly vocational and academic. And one of the similarities of Indonesian vocational higher education and university students in Indonesia, both of these students must complete their basic 12 year education. And this vocational higher education offers one to four uh, year program and it is offered by polytechnics. We call it polytechnics, or even it goes, or it is located in under the faculties or schools in a university of instit or institutes. And in one semester, uh, there are two semester in each year, and in one semester there are six meetings, roughly, including uh, mid and final exam. And within a two credit course, uh, there is a 90 minutes meeting uh, every week. And it offers 20 credits per semester. So with this highlight um, uh, item, which is general courses versus core courses, we need to highlight this uh, because general courses includes English language course. So English language course goes under this type of courses, while core courses goes under uh, the core competence from vocational students uh, need to achieve within their study. Um, this is really uh, relevant to our discussion later in the next slides. And from some studies also in Indonesia, many EMI programs have low and even no uh, English uh, requirement for both students and teachers. And of course, the study also shows and in line with some studies in other contexts that uh, some students have low English proficiency. So uh, we are going to use, but actually we did use uh, project-based learning. Uh, uh, at Poly Batam. So this uh, project-based learning actually in Ministry of Education for uh, vocational higher education in Indonesia. 
and Dwi Kartika Sari, one of the teaching staff, and I think uh, maybe the thinkers program initially at the program can share a bit about this. Go ahead, Budwi. Thank you, Bumala. Um, so I will talk a bit about uh, the implementation of project or problem-based learning or PBL uh, at Polybatam, where the outputs is not necessarily only products, but also services. This include maybe, for example, we sell some products or some services like, like auditing. Uh, it requires inter interdisciplinary collaborations. Uh, this is mandatory, so uh, beforehand, uh, Dr. Normala mentioned about um, core, uh, core courses and general courses. General courses is from English, uh, spe English for specific purposes uh, teachers and um, core courses are content teachers. The collaboration between these two courses are required and mandatory for uh, each implementations. And it's also required um, interdisciplinary in terms of uh, interdepartment. Yeah, meaning that uh, sometimes uh, some projects is um, implemented in business administration department and also in logistic international trade department. And this project or problem product based learning object requires more than one lecturer with various expertise, just I mentioned beforehand. Um, more references about uh, the implementation of project based learning at Polybatam can be found in. Uh, our website, uh, polybatamac.id, and also uh, under the Ministry of Education website, Um The case study that we want to uh, mention in this uh, sharing se session is the Indonesian Sales Competition, also, also known as uh, ISAC, and Southeast Asian Sales Competition, also known as CSAC. It is held annually until now. Um, it is based on role play approach, uh, focusing on business to business sales skills. This uh, sales skill uh, incorporate product knowledge, communication, negotiation, sales skill, and organizational behavior. Thus, the involvement of uh, several lecturers with interdisciplinary skills are required uh, so that we can cover all these skills and uh, deliver this to students. Back to you, Dr. Normala. Thank you, Budi. Okay, so um, we started this study in 2023. Um, so we collected documents. Um, this is this is, was exactly after the government, uh, the Indonesian MOE recommended PBL in Indonesia for for Indonesian vocational higher education. So we collected the uh, documents about ISEC and CSEC and project-based curri uh, curriculum. And we did uh, some interviews with the teachers uh, from three teachers uh, that were involved. Actually, uh, more than three, maybe it could be five at that time, Budri, Budwi. Uh, two uh, agreed to be interviewed and uh, we did interview with the students who uh, participated in the competition. So we did personal chats within this digital era and actually we did uh, ask for their permission and then we uh, express our intent about this study and if they agree or not and then once they agree and then we continued. And then we did one uh, each call, uh, WhatsApp call, um, voice call in this uh, study for each um, participant this is to um, to what is it to summarize or to clarify things that we have been talking uh, through the uh, personal chats so it is it's around um, 15 to 30 minutes for each so from uh, the students here are uh, the descriptions of the, our participants. So this, there are two students and two teachers. So the students, as we can see here, they come from different programs, business administration and international trade logistics. And they have a 
Miller, uh, English proficiency, which is B2, upper intermediate. And for the teachers, we are so lucky that both of the couple, the teachers agreed to, to participate in this study. And one of them is the English language teachers, which has a higher level of English uh, content uh, teachers. Oh, yeah. We collect the data and then we discuss. Yeah, uh, we use um, oh, WhatsApp chat and also Zoom meeting to discuss whatever we are going to clarify with uh, our understanding about the data that we have found. So... Uh, the result, uh, here is the explanations a little bit about CSEC. The result from our research uh, consists of many aspects. First, collaboration-wise, the events of the Indonesian SARS competition, also known as ISEC, and Southeast Asia SARS competition, also known as CSEC, have boosted collaboration between EMI and ESP teachers to improve their students' business-to-business -business or B2B sales skill. The collaboration starts with building sales cases, acting as potential buyers, and selecting real customers from partner university, uh, from partner industries. Uh, EMI and ESP teachers collaborate in observing, judging, and evaluating ISAC and CSAC competitors. As such, uh, teachers uh, communicate constantly to their mind who can advance from the qualification stage, semifinal, and final, and who has the right to be awarded as, as winners. Okay. So how the collaboration actually takes place? Uh, this is very interesting for myself, especially. So in PBL class, so... What we call pro, uh, it is a regular class uh, which is offered in one semester. So for the competition to prepare the competition, it started from the beginning. So from the regular class. So um, interdisciplinary content teachers happen. So if we can see that the uh, the students come from a, diff, a different. Uh, study program, business administration and logistic, and the teachers need to collaborate to uh, to complete to the competence needed by the students, and ESP teachers of uh, course adopting content materials and more practical uh, activities to the role play, and there is a coaching session which is uh, which was done. Uh, how how many uh the 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 duration between the coaching to the competition book is it one month or two months between the coach uh, around yes that. okay so there is a coaching session um for 14 meetings uh between emi content and marketing practitioners and english language teachers and they shared number of meetings for each uh each of them um, we use here a, que uh, a question mark about administrative issue, and then we are going to uh, discuss that later. And the, it, there is there are some, there was some initial meetings and some briefing, of course, during the preparations. And again, more practical activities are role play. And when we conducted the interviews, and the teachers show some key um, key topic or keywords. So from ESP teachers, uh, she said that we did more role play. And then the teachers started with analyzing the tech structure because it is bit, um, sales uh, marketing. So it needs the, the tech structure of small talk. So the teachers need to introduce the children. This is the small talk, how you are going to start the talk, blah, blah, blah. And the, of course, that uh, they use content materials and the teachers admitted uh, the challenges in uh, understanding the content knowledge. And from the content teachers, um, that they admit that they have 
uh, to use a new learning activity in their classroom, which is role play, and they introduce more cases than usual. This is to improve uh, analytical thinking, so the the students can uh, practice how to um, to give strategies to win the buyers. And there is a need uh, from perspective uh, the content lecturers from industrial practitioner. That's why they in, uh, invited the marketing practitioners. And the challenge, again, uh, in line with the need from the industrial practitioners, that there is uh, a need for insight from the authentic case. So actually, the teachers admitted that they need to send the students to sell the product directly to the real class, uh, to the real customers. Because in the classroom, maybe they just uh, focus with their classmates, but in the real world, it is more challenging. And of course, that in this case, there is a need for communication skills for the teachers. And from the students, uh, both of them uh, uh, really uh, valued the the inclusion or the role of industrial practitioner uh, both of the students valued it and as helpful really big help for their preparations and student one uh, one of the students said that uh, three of them is an ideal combination as a support for them for the competition and for the challenge, actually, the schedule during the coaching is, was really tough because they have some other courses. And for the other students, um, need more authentic cases. Maybe if we can say this is more practice to the authentic case. So this was admitted by the EMI teachers from the first slide. So what the implications? So the from implications, we can grab some uh, areas. First of all, uh, from business program, EMI business program. So the teaching approach moves towards the case, a uh, case studies and role play, and the teaching approach, uh, uh, which. form by CSEC, it's really helpful. So see help them is also an uh, we put a question mark here because uh it depends on the its context, but we believe that project-based learning is an ideal approach to credit allocation. So as I said that uh, English goes under general courses and then um core content or core competence go under the core courses. So in Indonesia, there is a minimum that we have to meet in each semester to be eligible to be a full-time teacher. So that's actually, so uh, we can discuss that if we, we want to discuss this during the discussion session later after the presentation. So PBL is an ideal approach at this stage. And we also question, uh, not question, but consider that uh, the students uh, recruitment with the minimum English is really um, helpful. And for the curriculum, the implication, we can see that now that PBL approach is uh, best recommended for the teacher collaboration and authentic learning beyond the role play. It is uh, worth uh, trying or implementing and a solution to create the allocations. It is team teaching and students recruitment requirement especially for the English proficiency test and duration guide for teachers needs uh, to be done. So uh, from the interview with the teachers, they, they, do they do have some guidance. So you talk about this, you discuss this, you strengthen the students in this part of skills. So they do share about your role. So, but actually the collaborative light is missing. Even though they realize that uh, it is needed, but they yeah actually it is like a trigger from uh, us as the the interviewer and case study and role play uh, 
from the content focus uh what we can see here more tolerant to l1 back to the issues in the teachers part so in this um in this case study so the teachers uh emi teachers are not forced to speak the whole uh classroom in english but they are more tolerant to l1 but the case studies and role play in language class it is a language focus here l1 uh, l2 or english is um uh, admitted by the teachers so as the conclusion um the conclusions are uh, that ppl is evidence of success especially in our our case uh, PPL also allows for collaboration of interdisciplinary teachers and collaboration should be done in all stages from preparation, implementation and assessment, including evaluation and authentic, uh, authentic uh, learning is key here. Back to you. Okay. Yes, maybe Budwi, you can share that why PPL is evidence of success because both of the students that we invited got uh prices <laughs> in where, where was it then the CSEC in Kuala Lumpur in uh, Thailand yeah in Thailand yeah so uh it was an evidence that they uh why we call it an evidence that it is really helpful and efficient even effective uh for the study uh that we can recommend that uh, we need to see how actually happening in the classroom. We admitted that we didn't see this uh, during our um, during our case study, and for the for the research in the future, its transferability to other specialization is worth doing. In particular, for example, what have come to my personal reflection, I'm an English teacher in maritime uh, studies. And I uh, learned about like the text structure and then how I could um, initiate the collaboration between me or between English language teachers in Maritimes and the core, uh, the core EMI content or core content lecturers. But we need to uh, show that by the evidence of studies. Thank you. That's all from us. Thank you so much, Dr. Simbolon and uh, Dr. Katika Sari. That was, um, that was uh, great. And uh, yes, yeah, this is uh, the beginning of our Q&A session. So I actually have a few questions, but I I would like to ask the people online if they have any questions first. You can either speak up or if you are shy and don't want to, you're facing the recording, you can type in the chat, whatever suits you better. Why, why people are uh, thinking and writing, I might have uh, some questions actually. Um, more than a question is a, is a request of, uh, of more information. And, oh, wait, but wait, somebody has already written in the chat, so I will ask it later. Um, Bridget Goodman is writing, this was a very informative presentation. Do you have any publications or plans for publication of your data? Yes, uh, shall we uh, answer now, Paolo? Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you, Bridget. Uh, yes, indeed, that for us, actually, it is very informative and a great learning for us. Uh, so we are writing up uh, what we have been doing and we have, uh, we plan to publish, but of course, that we are still writing up now. Hopefully we can do that as soon as possible. Thank you for asking. There are a couple more questions. Is there any chance that EMA program at Indonesian Polytechnics contribute to the objective of Polytechnic itself, such as preparing employability skills for the students? Yep. 
Is there any yeah? Is there any chance that EMA program at Indonesian Polytechnic contributes to objective uh, of Polytechnic itself, such as preparing employability? Uh, maybe Budwi. Uh, um, I will I will share from the studies and then from the uh the current uh what is it uh, survey that we have done from Indonesian Ministry, but would you maybe can share from Polybatam? Go ahead. Bo to the acceptance of students in industry with the MI. Yeah, I think uh, uh, that's the, the, the very objectives of internationalization, especially for international class that uh, Bu Mala just mentioned in beforehand about the higher education, internationalization and their objective to prepare uh, our student for the global markets, which also requires English as their uh, medium of medium uh, languages in many uh, works that they will do in the future. But um, I mean, that's what we hope for, <laughs> what we expect from, from uh, doing this for them. But uh, for the research about how this is really manifested in their life after, after they graduate, it's still uh, need further in investigation. Okay, thank you, Budui. Uh, maybe I can add. Yeah, um, this is a uh, what is it? A very good questions and actually reflective question, uh, Chandra Anthony. Um, because when we ask that EMI program and then to the contributions of employability skills, so what? Um, personally, uh, I observe that it is not the EMI or the English language itself that makes the employability skills. But actually, as we can see, for example, in the business program, actually there are uh, multi skills that they need, especially uh, with the soft skills like cre uh, creativity, critical thinking. And that's actually happening in the uh, program, program, if I may say, in vocational higher education in Indonesia currently. So uh, when and to answer your question with the EMI program, so uh, for your information in Indonesia now with the agenda of Indonesian ministry, uh, like sending students and then uh, creating EMI program and students from EMI program can do their one semester course overseas. So um, I just say this in a, a spoken way, but uh, I can see the data later. But during our meeting, uh, in reviewing the program, actually there was an increase of the employability of the students with the skills of English and other skills, which is actually, I have to admit that the soft skills play uh, in considerable uh, importance or role in mission. We have a couple more uh, questions and the, the next one is actually, um. It's actually very interesting because I think uh, lots of EMI researchers uh, don't, I, I think, I don't, I'm not sure if they are aware of this when they're doing research. In your literature review, have you found that PBL would also be efficient for other subjects, for example, chemistry, or is it different depending on the subject matter? Mm -hmm. Would we? Would you like to answer first or, okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we have to discuss yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the and uh, how this uh, research might um, be generalizable in different subjects. Um, Bumala, maybe we can <laughs> share what we have discussed. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, from the publication, uh, uh, actually, um. What is it? Yeah, that's actually uh, one of the recommendation. It's transferable to other specialization or field of study. Uh, talking from my uh, practice, as I'm uh, an English teacher in for marine and fisheries, so actually we have done this for two times. Uh, despite of its challenges, actually it is really helpful uh, to 
to help the students to uh, what's it to measure their capability and then to guide them where uh, at the stage of communication in particular if you say about chemistry so i'm talking about um, maritime so uh, it is not uh, evidence yet because i have been doing this and the students are not um, are not uh, uh, do not graduate yet so that's what I can say, thank you. But it is worth trying to keep uh, the study on this topic. Thank you, Dr. Simbolon. And the next question is about to what extent is it important to elicit students and professors' attitudes towards EMI implementation, more precisely attitudes towards the transition itself? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, thank you for the question, Rima. Actually, some studies have been done, uh, especially for Indonesia. Um, despite of its positive attitude, actually, uh, in Indonesian context, uh, many studies, including the one that... that um, that have been done some and with some others, uh, there is uh, a tension or maybe uh, not misunderstanding, but actually when they they are okay with English, English is everywhere, and with English from the student uh, from the teachers, so we can improve our uh, our capability. We can access some resources and sort of things, but actually. Um, they hope and expect when they conducted that in their real class, actually there are some challenges. Then actually, this is actually the gap. And there are some, uh, maybe, uh, what's it? Uh, Rima, if um, you can uh, find further uh, articles on EMI, actually um, the, the problem in Indonesians actually uh, the English proficiency it's new. so that's why uh, in one of the uh, the point that we shared in in the slides that there is a perception with EMI they can improve their English but when they found themselves in uh, in their real class uh, I did some uh, like professional development in some uh, polytechnics and they did express this they found that really challenging. So there is a, um, uh, what is it? There is a tension, or maybe we need uh, to inform them. Actually, the expect is good, but you have to realize the implications. You need to practice your English. You need to improve your English. You need to take care of your students' need. That's the key, actually, of the learning process. Would we, do you want to add some? Um, I'm not sure if uh, we have uh, elicited uh, professors' attitude towards AMI implementation, but we have done uh, some some uh, data elicitation to students, uh, especially for uh, CSEC competitors. So um, what they, what they, uh, experience is mostly positive attitudes about how they think that these programs really helps them to move beyond uh, the classrooms. Um, for professors, because uh, we have the 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 different style from content teachers and um, ESP teachers, their attitudes are might be might vary because uh, they have different focus uh, on the skills that they want to develop to their students. So um, I'm, not there, I'm not sure that whether that will uh, answer your question, but um, for uh, students, I think I, I think uh, I can show you some some data about how uh, this program have uh, stimulated a positive attitudes uh, within our students. 
I thank you both of you. There's another question, and this one is about so. Uh, it gives some background first. ESP teachers are often pointed to be ideal partners in the development of EMI students and lecturers' intercultural competence. Business as a subject also seems a relevant discipline for the topic. Was intercultural competence somehow approached in this program? If so, how did that happen? Okay. Thank you for the question, Marcelo Kramer. Uh, I believe in the program, but business, how to, especially for the marketing skill, uh, marketing uh, or sales uh, skills. Is there any intercultural competence? Yes, of course. Um, yeah, some uh, some 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 of the content teacher specific uh, uh teacher one only one content teacher one subject teacher we 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 talk about um many content teachers that also um collaborate in this program where some of them also uh more specifically uh focus on uh, intercultural how they can. Uh, behave like uh, global citizens, how they will uh, interact with persons from Thailand, for example, or from uh, Singapore, and how this uh, language uh, can uh, do as a barrier within their uh, sales or negotiation skill. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Budui, and I agree with you. And then one of the business teachers that I uh, spoke uh, in uh, personal, um, like in social life, uh, she admitted that um, actually when we are going to address people, when we are going to uh, in even organization, in it is business class, of course. Uh, so we cannot just mention uh, Mr. and Mrs in English, but we have to use the honorable because in Indonesian, we use yang terhormat. Uh, we cannot just yang terhormat means uh, the honorable, but uh, maybe for Paolo, if you I say like uh, for your teacher or maybe the chancellor, chancellor, say that the honorable, it is really, it sounds like weird, but for that context, the students cannot deny that they have to uh, delete the, um, the honorable, but by the need to use that, the honorable Mr., for example, the mayor, blah, blah, blah. So, so it was a kind of really, yeah, a part of intercultural. So it did that we need uh, this um, intercultural competence. Thank you for the very interesting question, Marcelo. Um. We have another question, and this one is, uh, I think, uh, very relevant to the scope of Elinet because it's asking, uh, did you consider or integrate global Englishes or world Englishes perspective towards EMI enactment in your project? Okay. Uh, um, thank you for the question, Paolo. Um, there is a possibility for this. Um, I myself, as a researcher in EMI, uh, I'm still I begin to learn about the global global English approach. Yeah. Um, and within Indonesian team, uh, for Im your information, the audience uh, here. So Indonesian alienate uh, contacts, we do have some members here. Uh, the core members, if I may say, who have interest, actually we are still um, studying uh, what, where the global English from Indonesian context is going. So with this, especially from the uh, from the perspective of cultural, there is possibility. That's. That's what I can see. What about you, Bo Dewey? Yeah, because uh, like Singapore, uh, singles is already like have their own, yeah, 
like we can say well established but in indonesia i think there are some uh but it is a great area to dig or to start uh researching go ahead would we if you have any comment on this no okay Nothing thank you <laughs> all right no, that, that, that was great. Thank you. I think that answered uh, the question that we had in the chat. And we have another one, which is about how can such programs be effective in reducing monolingual ideologies? Very interesting question. Yeah, yeah very interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you, Paolo. Yeah. So that's actually to my surprise. Um, so with the, the, the case study here, uh, in the project based learning, so the content teachers mostly use uh, Indonesian. So while the English lecturers, uh, use mostly, uh, English, even very little Indonesian. So if we see here that how can such programs be effective in reducing so this is the way that the students so this is the way actually uh one of the comment from or the answer from the teachers ESE teachers here uh actually my challenge is how to make the students understand the content and then when the content lecturers give the content in indonesian which is their first language, if we say that Indonesian as the first language. So the students have actually some, some knowledge also. This is about the cases. And they when they take the English courses, so they already get a, an image or some ideas. Or oh, the teachers talk about this. So this is really uh this is really I think effective. And in this way that we um suggest or propose that EMI is not only about English only, but it is about that to work a meaningful learning from the student, for the students. Thank you, Bu Harimi. If I can add more, uh, mm -hmm. that is really interesting question, Bu, Bu Rima. Actually, um, Indonesian South Competition or ISAC uh, uh, is delivered in Indonesian language. And uh, CSEC, which is a Southeast Asia South competition, is delivered in uh, English language. Uh, what's interesting is that uh, these two um, events usually <laughs> um, won by almost the same person. <laughs> so meaning that um, this person really uh, should be able to incorporate both the content skills, which is negotiation skills, selling skills, starting from understanding the customer situation until they need uh, how they can dig the questions so that they can really meet the expectation of the customers and something of that kind, and then how they can deliver that in English for a Southeast Asia sales competition. So uh, in how we deliver the program is that these two uh, events go side by side, and that uh, for both of the for for them to be able to win these two events is just for them to to be able to master all the skills of the content that they uh, the the content teachers delivered, and also for the language that the language teacher uh, deliver. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much uh, to the both of you. Um, I haven't seen any more questions, so uh, ah, I just said that. But yeah, we do have another question in the chat. Uh, do you find any prospect or challenge in the collaboration between ESP and content lecturers in EMI implementation? Yeah. Thank you for the question, uh, Pak Chandra dan Pak Chandra Anthony. Um, so this is actually a very challenging question. Yeah. Do you see any, any uh, uh, prospect challenge? Uh, I think of the teachers, 
do they want uh, and also the initiative or the what's it the policy i mean the the for the poly button the uh, program coordinator has the initiative and intent initiate from the beginning of this program so i think that's the the understanding and the willing uh, great awareness toward this so when uh, the awareness of the importance of co collaboration i think um, we can uh, start uh, seeking start uh, studying and browsing any possible way and if i want to add a more specific uh, prospect uh, challenge is that um it is already mentioned here the what's it the invitation or the existence of practitioner uh Poly Batam is really lucky they have a marketing practitioner and i think a marketing marketing practitioner is uh, accessible yeah in many contexts um in my context also, uh, maritime, one of my colleagues actually used to be a captain in a ship, on a ship, so I can in, uh, I can collaborate with him. Uh, but I um I can I don't see any in any uh uh existent or maybe any availability in like uh, in chemistry in engineering department if they can access or have practitioner in this uh context so that's actually i can say thank you thank you so much dr simbolon and uh, yeah i think that's all the questions they have so maybe now i can ask that uh, that question I had at the beginning. You during the presentation, you touched very briefly on the topic of uh, of of the materials, and you also mentioned one of the studies you built upon was from Briggs and others. And uh, I wanted to know if you could say something more about that, about the role played by materials in these programs, if possible. Is that is not really a question? It's more like a, a request to know more. If... <laughs> Okay. Would you like to start, would we? Uh, the content material and then role play. Um, maybe you can start, Bumala. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the content material from the perspective of English lecturers, uh, uh, the English teachers admit that uh, I don't know actually uh, what's happening during the what is it, uh, the business to business talking when someone wants to win the buyer's intent to buy. So what's kind of the strategy, so the, the content. So I need cases and then these cases are provided by the content teachers, the content uh, teachers and uh, with the help of the mark, uh, the practitioners. So that's the uh, content. Um, uh, for your information actually, Paul, so in Indonesia, um, Yes, this yeah we have to admit that um, with some challenges that we found or we en encounter, so the the approach that we adopt for ESP or English for, for specific purposes, we usually uh, mostly start with the vocabulary and then it's really challenging to go up to the next level to the language use. That's actually the case. But with this uh, case study, um, the ESP and e content teachers collaborate to provide uh, case studies about uh, what kind of problems that a seller can encounter when they uh, try to sell their products. That's actually and then with the role play so with the case uh, given to the students and the teachers will give them more uh, frequencies of role play want to be the buyer want to be the uh, seller so that's actually uh hope i'm making that sense <laughs> okay thank you 
Right, no, that, that's fine. Thank you so much, Dr. Simbolon. All right, so uh, thank you everybody for uh, joining this session. In case you are interested in the topic of EMI, I uh, want to remind you that next week, uh, at almost the same time on Thursday at 10 a.m., we have another seminar on this topic. And yeah, I will hopefully see most of you there.